here. Shall we pray, Heavenly Father, we've been singing what we know to be the truth, that you are here, and we know that it is true. We know that no one can change that, but we know, Lord, we need to be changed to really appreciate your presence and the fact of where you are, that you are here. And because of that, we know that all things are possible by reason of your presence, which we have found to be interpreted to us, revealed to us, and we know it to be a fact. Therein lies the message, and therein lies the resurrection, and therein lies the gathering, and together for the rapture, and to the rapture, and to the wedding supper, the coronation, and all of those things to come back and fulfill the word that you left to Adam, that he caused the interruption to replenish the whole earth, to fill it, and bring the earth into peace and harmony by reason of your presence. And we, in our presence therein, and we know that's true because our very presence, Lord, has brought so many disgusting things and challenges and degradation. And now the whole earth and all of what we call mankind, even the kingdom of life, which is in the trees and the flowers, all things corrupted, but of because of our presence, but we know, thank you, Lord, that one day the very presence of yourself and ourselves there will bring the earth into the harmony and beauty that it has never had, and then that's going to be dissolved and something even far greater take place. This is beyond comprehension, Lord, because we realize man has a very favorite saying, and that is, uh, and it's true that if it's not broken, don't fix it. And, we wonder how that you can improve on the improvement. Well, we know, Lord, that nothing's impossible, that the new heavens and new earth shall cause whatever we see <clears throat> fade to insignificance, either even as we have seen, Lord, everything else that's, that's been detrimental since the time of Paul. We're going right back there, and everything is fading now into insignificance in the light in which we stand. So we praise you for this, and may our hearts not be filled with joy but may our lives exhibit it. In Jesus' name we pray, man. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, before we start number 20, I want to read a little letter that came to me, and I don't, I very seldom do this because the letters are at home, and <clears throat> this was in the mail here this morning. So I just leave them at home. And this brother writes, he says, above all, I thank God even more for the stand you took in the word. Your ministry is beneficial to our little church. Personally, I feel a changed person. You know, this message will change you. Oh, you better believe it. You might not think so, but you're going through metamorphosis right now, and you're either going to go on, or you're already dead, and you're going back to the ashes in the lake of fire. You say, well, Mike, how can you say that? I didn't say it. God said it. They indicated to be true. You see, people don't want to look at reality. None of us want to even look at our tax bill. Go ahead, defraud the IRS and see what happens. That's what I say. My records are open. Any mistakes I've made are, are nothing. I think I've overpaid them every year. In fact, there's deductions right last year I never even bothered to take in the year before and the year before, which would have amounted to quite a few dollars. Too lazy. Slothful, another word for it. Don't fool with the word of God and think, well, this is a passing fancy. You know the world thinks that? William Branham, tough luck, nice guy, but a goof off. Swell ahead. That's what they said to Paul. They said the same thing to Jesus. They said it to Moses. You think they're not going to say it to you? Why, come on. As Lan Andrews, which I seldom read anymore, said, wake up and smell the coffee. Well, if you drink too much coffee, even that won't do you any good. Yes, he said, personally, I feel a changed person, more relaxed and at peace with God and the brethren. I used to be in awe of certain individuals in the message, messengers, but thank God it's all gone. Problems we have some, but we are happy for the word. A few members want to leave and some simply backslide, but we take comfort in the word. We thank God for the knowledge that the word itself is a separation and also expresses what's hidden. <clears throat> This teaches, teaching forces a clear-cut decision on the individual. Brother, they let me say that I appreciate and respect the prophet more since I listened to your tapes, especially Spoken Words Original Seed series and some of the anointed, a few of the anointed ones of the end time. I never saw the importance of vindication like I do now. Also, I never really saw the deception like I see it now. Regards to your family and the brethren. So. 
<coughs> it spreads. All right, we're going to look at number 20, Spoken Words Original Seed. And last Wednesday, as we read page 36, we find Brother Brown is speaking about seed planting. Seed planting. This is a replanting of the original word and going right back to Genesis to show every single step, every type, every shadow. So last Wednesday, as we read page 36, we found Brother Brown speaking about seed planting as exemplified by Billy Graham, Pentecostals like Oral Roberts, and he himself. About Billy, he simply referred to his converts as denominational plants from denominational creedal word. Of the Pentecostals, he speaks of their false baptism, as though the anointing on the spirit the coming forth in the flesh was the baptism. Then, without mentioning his own name, he speaks of a virgin of the word, even as did the Apostle Paul in both 2 Corinthians 11 <clears throat> and in Ephesians 5. He then explains the present dilemma of the overdue coming of Christ the bridegroom. Christ will not marry a prostitute. He is waiting for a virgin of the word. Now, how's he going to get one? How did he get one in the first place? He took a man that was in denomination, organization, revealed himself to him, gave the vindicated word, the same as he did with Moses. Same vindication was upon Christ. Never is there any difference because God cannot change. That's exactly why Jesus excoriated those who knew better. Paul did the same thing. William Branham did the same thing. And it's going to be evident pretty soon when we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air and then come back at the end of the three and a half years after the marriage supper of the Lamb. And you know how it is that the whole world is singing, we want to set the world on fire for God. We are going to come back with God and set the world on fire. So I don't think that's nice, Brother Bill. Who asked you an opinion? What credibility do you have that you can add to the Word of God or give an opinion? Who art thou, a man, to reply against God? Can the thing form say to him that formed, Why hast thou made me thus? Why? Pharaoh said, did you raise me up to destroy me? Ask him that. Question the wisdom of God. Go ahead. See, this is why we don't get healed. This is why we don't get our answers to prayers. James said, you want it only to, to spend it upon your own lusts and to fool around. You make a mockery of God. You make God your servant. You want to tell God what to do? He said, forget it. Isaiah said, you're counted as a small dust of the balance. You have ever weighed up beans and things years ago in one of those open scoop shovel things? And what do you see at the bottom? Just, whew, dust. Counted as grasshoppers in his sight. You think he can't see us? What's those satellites doing up there with their infrared cameras and little telescopes? They beam down on here. And by the time they're finished, they can put a bomb right in Saddam Hussein's lamp if he's sitting there at that time. Boom. You think God doesn't look us in the eyeballs? <laughs> we are the most pitiful and yet the most marvelous in all the world. How can we be the apple of his eye? I often wonder myself. He then explains the present dilemma of the overdue coming of Christ the bridegroom. Christ will not marry a prostitute. He is waiting for a virgin of the word. He is now getting one through this message, the receding. There is a predestinated bride at the end of the road, and the road ends is now here. He then makes a positive but repeated statement, Adam's bride, Jehovah's bride, and Christ's bride are pregnant by adultery. <clears throat> and it is in this adultery 
that started with Eve, off the word that brought children into the world that die rather than live forever. He does not go to Scripture at that point, having covered it before, but it is found in Re Revelation 2, 18 to 23. Now remember, Brother Branham brought that up, and we went there. <clears throat> and notice how it is put. All right, and unto the messenger of the church which is in Thyatira write, These things set the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and thy love, and thy service, and thy faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. <clears throat> in other words, they go right to a works program, but let's face it, their works are a million miles off the word, but all anti-word. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. You actually allow her, you endorse her, you aggrandize her, you put her in preeminence, you make her your ultimate, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Now look, at this is looking back. It's, it's put in the print, paper printed page, before this ever came to pass, hundreds of years before. Now we're looking back on it, looking forward, looking back what was done. Now here's what's going to happen to her because she never took the warning. Now she should have booted out the female prophetess. There's no such thing. Women cannot handle the word. What is this female prophetess? It is the church becoming her own head. She has taken the place of Christ, the bride, and she says, this is it. And you notice every paper you pick up nowadays, I don't care if it's a pope in Denver, it's the same rotten, stinking mess, the harlot system. And every time you pick up Newsweek or Times or anything at all, the church is looked upon as a man-made institution that's supposed to have some kind of a, a, a you know, a beneficent, uh, refining, a nice little effect upon the people to just sort of, if you're going to come in for heaven's sake, don't talk about that God stuff, but just get with it because it's an institution and it sort of helps a little bit and they can be used and manipulated. Oh, come on. I don't care what paper you pick up. There's no thought of God at all. There's no thought of prevailing prayer. It's only a palliative. It's only psychiatry. Well, let psychiatry prove that. Oh, well, I won't say any more how I feel about it because it wasn't going to work anyway. <clears throat> God can do a better job than I can do it. Now he said, I gave her a chance to repent, and she repented not. And behold, I will cast her into, bed, into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into the great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Now, in other words, you're going to have the whole mess. Age number one that messed up, that bunch. See? Now, in other words, what you're looking at is the seed that was passed on got worse and worse and worse. So the second age contributed to the bunkum. And the third went to the severe bunkum. And the fourth went to the place where, the, where hey, the Roman Catholic Church took everything into absolute darkness and blackness. <clears throat> now, they're a mess. We know that. But as the light begins to return, you're going to see that as these former ones left the word and got to the, to the apex of the abysmal darkness under the Catholic Church, you notice what happens. Lutheranism goes down the drain. Uh, Wesleyan goes down the drain, and Pentecostalism goes down the drain. There isn't anything left. See? But what the palmer worm, canker worm, the grasshopper, and the caterpillar got into and messed up, and the tree that was cut down with the, with the brass ring about it, as though there could be no further uh, growth, there starts to come back at the end time, and it has to be a reseeding. It's just the same as Aesurus. When his wife would not come in unto him, he said, get her out of here and get somebody that will. And you know what happened? Let's be honest. The whole line changed. They took a Jewess, Esther. Now, God is going to get a bride for, him, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And get this, it's going to be a bride that drops everything but this word. Sure. And boy, I'm going to tell you one thing. That bride will know that he's the real one. 
She's not going to say, well, I'll tell you what, this is a very good example of what I want, and I, I just don't know that I want him, but I'll know the real thing when he comes. He said, Brother Vail, when are you going to get off that? I'm not going to get off because that same guy filled a lot of ears here, and I'm going to cut your ears off and fill them with lead or something. And when I meet you at the white throne, the record will be clear that I said it hundreds of times, not once. So you may be fooling, but I'm not. Because it's all over you. The origins of life, you saw that film. That film is not hokum. A picture was taken. And the manifestation of what that's all about is right under your eyes, and we're soon going to get another film. Now, Brother Brown is either a liar or he's true. He said, when they get to that, it's over. Even the fundamentalists know when Israel is the homeland, you better start holding your breath or not breathing too hard just in case you miss something. All right, here is what we see. <clears throat> Brother Branham covered this. The total rejection of Israel ending up in a mini great tribulation in A.D. 70 under Titus. And now they've been scattered for 2,000 years. I remember they lived under the thraldom of Rome for a long time and others ahead of that, starting with Babylon when they got carried into captivity. Now also the bride church went into captivity and the whole church is facing its thraldom because it's all going to be purged. The church is going to be purged, the earth is going to be purged, and Israel is going to be purged. I mean, there's a lot of things going to go up in smoke. The fire of Almighty God. <clears throat> now, it tells you right here where this is going. And we know that the Roman Catholic Church is the harlot, and she's got prostitute daughters. Now, Rome is defying the Protestants to identify her as the prostitute or the whore upon the seven hills. Isn't it strange that Mr. Demas Shakarian, the great high pope mucky muck mogul of the Pentecostals, and Mr. Pentecost Duplicy standing right there, and all the Pentecostals sit back while Dr. Bartolucci is more Pentecostal than they are, and he said, don't you dare call us the whore any longer. They say, oh, yes, Jim, oh, yes, Jim, oh, yes, Jim. <laughs> you talk about uh, Edgar Bergen, Charlie MacArthur set up. You've seen it. An old Demas sitting right on the Pope's lap. Now he's got to be wooden head and wooden hearted. And that's a very sweet and mild statement. To be Charlie McCarthy to the Pope. And they don't only have a Mortimer Snurd, they have that funny little girl, too. What's her name? I forget. But she, you can tell by her looks where she stands. From age one to age four, the church has indulged in covert adultery and fornication. But in the fourth age, it openly espouses and demands it and evangelizes by it and ends in the lake of fire. What am I talking about? Her fornication and adultery leaving the word. Brother Branham will now start to show us the truth of Matthew 13 and Hebrews 6 combined and how it ends up <coughs> in Hebrews 6 and Acts 3. In other words, we'll see the connection. As we go to page 37, the last sentence, and carry right on. Now, like Adam and Jehovah's, he found them preg pregnated with man-made doctrines of denominations. Like God's truth in Genesis 1, every seed has brought forth after its kind. Now, remember the seeds that were evil did not appear in Genesis 1. They appeared after Genesis 3 and the expulsion from the garden and the sin therein. <clears throat> they were there. Now, so when the Spirit fell on her, man had been there to her womb and filled it with denominational seeds of his own thinking. 
So that's why she got to be the way she is, and Christ could not come to her. That's hard, isn't it? Now, Brother Bran was setting the thesis here all the way through Scripture. And remember, if you don't agree with him, if you think for one minute that you have some thoughts concerning this where he might have gone astray, simply recall to yourself, this man is vindicated, and you can't produce anything. If you were called to produce anything as, you knew, as if you knew something from God, you'd fall flat on your face. The fact of the matter is you're already on your face. Amen. I haven't got enough brains to know it. <clears throat> yeah, one day, here it comes. I was up in Greens Mill. I had been praying for a couple of days. This happened many years ago that I went to Mishawaka. I've never said this before on a tape. But I went to Mishawaka. You remember about that colored boy? I just found Pentecostal people, and I never knew there was such a thing. That's at Mr. Walker, the camp meeting. I went up there and found them, and I thought I'd found a bunch of angels. I saw them speaking in tongues and things. I never heard of it before, but there they were running up and down the four speaking in tongues. And I thought, my, that's wonderful. The old UPC and, and PA of W and, and all those kinds merged together. <clears throat> There was a segregation between the white and colored then, so they had to have their convention up north, and it was at Mishawak, Indiana. In other words, you're telling you the people from the south, the southerners came up there, blacks and whites, they weren't worried about anything, and they mixed with the blacks and whites up north, and they had this great camp meeting, and they had to have it there because it wouldn't work down south. My, I had a dollar seventy-five, just enough to get me home. I put a nickel of it, of, of some of it, into old donuts and rolls, about two or three days old, and went down and got me a jug of water at the hydrant, and went up to the cornfield and took the seats out of my Ford and laid it down, pressed my britches, put it between them, pressed, imagine that, pressed my britches for that night seersucker pants. Well, that explains the seersucker pants I had on, and a little old T-shirt. <clears throat> Next morning, I went down again. I didn't want to eat with them. I was welcome, but I didn't want to eat with them because I had nothing to put in their offering. That guy was such a sticker, he wouldn't even read somebody else's newspaper going by his own. Interesting, isn't it? And so I went to find and found out that day uh, that, uh, that they would dance, and there they were prancing. They would sing in the spirit, and I thought, oh, my, that sounds good. One man would ri raise, rise, rise up and speak in tongues, and then another one give the interpretations, and brother, it was so. They call people back there in the audience. I thought, oh, brother, that's wonderful. Tell Miss Jones or so-and-so to come right now. The Lord's calling her, and here she comes. That's right. Then this one would speak in tongues. The other one interpreted. I thought, oh, my, the millennium is fixing to start. This is it. And so if I could just shake the hands of, uh, of those godly men, I thought. And I went over to one of them when I was outside walking around, and they didn't know me. I was a little old fellow out there. <clears throat> so I went around walking around the church, and after a while, when they had a little recess, and I met a man out there. He was one of them. And I shook his hands, and I said, how do you do, brother? Now, you know God's given me a little gift here to find out things when, what, when he wants me to know it, see. Now, in other words, he can't operate this just at will, but he can open the door to it. I thought, if I could ever get to speak and let him, get him to speak and, and let him say something, I'd find out whether it was really true or not, what he saw going on. So I saw that, uh, what looked like to be one of the leaders, and I shook his hand, and, how do you do, brother? And he said, how do you do? And I talked to him a little bit, and he was a real Christian, and, and he was, and I thought, oh, praise God. <clears throat> After a while, I came around the corner and hit this other man and said, how do you do, brother? And I got to talking to him. And if I ever talked to a hypocrite, there was one of them. He was a black-headed man. He had a baby by a blonde-headed woman. Now, that wouldn't be bad, but you see, he wasn't married to her. Two babies by the blonde. He liked was married to a brunette. I saw it in the vision right before me. Now I thought, now I'm really confused. Now how could that same spirit be on a man, a godly man, and the other a devil, a hypocrite? And I thought, God, I'd better leave this whole thing alone because I don't know. She couldn't figure it. I was only about 19 or 20 years old, and I thought, I'd just better leave the thing alone. Well, I don't know. How, could the wor how in the world could that be? I can't say anything about it. I can't say anything against it. But I know that that man's wrong. And that same spirit, I'd watch it. It'd fall there and take the same effect, and I thought, there's something wrong here somewhere. That's all there was to it. That's the same thing that happened down there in, uh, in Montreal, I think, in Brother Smith's church, Pentecostal, when Dr. Uh, Cliff, uh, Cl uh, Cliff, yeah, 
went in there and he was a linguist, know about five languages, and he heard five languages he knew. And three were praising God wondrously and two were cursing God horribly. <clears throat> you know, without discerning the spirits, where do you stand? What do you, we know, come on. You know, <laughs> these gifts are really tricky. And once you think you've got something and don't know that you really got something by some kind of indication or backing this word to a perfection wherein it can be manifested, you've got troubles. See, this is why, like this man wrote me from Africa, he's got peace. It's different. You don't have to look anymore. You found your pearl at great price. All you got to do is save up. You can take it. You can buy it. You can buy the farm that the, the great treasure lays there. See, been laying up treasures. <clears throat> well, before it's over, you'll, you'll make it. Don't worry about it. And um, so he said, now I thought I'm really confused. Uh, there's something wrong somewhere. So I talked to the man, and he said, did you ever receive the Holy Ghost? I said, I don't believe I've got what you fellows have. It's notice a tricky answer. He said, glory to God. Did you ever speak in tongues? I said, no, sir. He said, then you ain't got her. Should be him, shouldn't it? I said, well, I don't guess I have. See, this is something new. I've never seen or heard of it. <clears throat> he said, well, go in there and get her. She's sure for you. I said, thank you, sir. I thought, brother, I don't want what you got. So then I looked at it a little bit, and I went on around a little while, and went on around. I went out in the woods that night, and I thought, God have mercy. I'm going home. And I went home, and I couldn't see anything for or against it. Now, <clears throat> I want you to notice this thing here, where you sin ma see sin manifested, and this guy was kidding himself that everything was perfectly all right because he could do this and get away with it because he had this anointing on him. Now, <clears throat> This teaching came out in Canada by, by Basil G. Leonard and was picked up by Victor Warwell of The Way, which some of you know, perhaps only too well <clears throat> or not well enough. But anyway, they covered this beautifully, according to them, by quoting John, the spirit that the, the, the flesh profits nothing. You see, the words that I speak are spirit and life. There's where the life is. The flesh profits nothing. So they said, you can do whatever you want in the flesh. It doesn't matter. Then you can go right into the, operate in the realm of the spirit, which is true, but they didn't know, and they wouldn't take what William Branham said. And I warned Werwell, stay away from Leonard. <clears throat> All right, his wife went and he went. Of course, when, when, when you can coin in on 24 millions of dollars a year for this, what does it really matter? You know, you got your reward here. And their word to me when they went to those classes, which I also had gone to but knew the fallacy, they came back and said, you almost led us astray. They were angry because they almost listened and didn't attend. I'm going to tell you, from this pulpit, and I don't fear for one minute, you can buy God for nothing and sell him for billions. But the day will come when he wants his price for his merchandise that he didn't tell you you could have and weren't entitled to. That's why we stay clear of money here. I'm not interested. Even with my back to the wall, I'll not sell my soul. I will sell everything else and you can have it because my life is almost gone anyway. I say, I won't take near as long to die as some of you because I'm older. I'm pretty tough in good shape, they say. I talked to Rog the day when he found out you should take one teaspoonful of those crystals, he got a reaction. Alphonse Palmberg did. He got a very severe reaction. I took a tablespoon and nothing. Now, either I'm dead or I'm a tough old buzzard. <laughs> and as Roger said, you're better shaped than I'm, as I'll trade you. <laughs> Look, don't, don't shortchange God. Look, I do it enough up here. Don't you do it down there. We're in his presence. Yeah, don't mistake that for one <clears throat> split second. Um, so, he said, well, go in there and get her. I thought, thank you, sir, but, but brother, I don't know what you got. 
So then I looked at it a little bit and went on around a while and went around and around. In other words, he's, he, he's like Dr. Mordecai Ham. When, when Brother Ham was up there in Minneapolis and they had this real wild Pentecostal meeting where this guy was touching people. They didn't go down, he'd push him down. And Mordecai would go around looking like this. And I got curious and I said, well, Brother Ham, what do you think about it? He never answered. He's very tricky. He said, I'm observing. I'm observing. See, that man had the, he had the Holy Ghost without a doubt. Just like Brother Branham. I'm observing. Wouldn't say a thing. You know, we're so prone to shoot our mouths off, it's pitiful. We always forget, as I mentioned the other day, what Lincoln said. You can keep your mouth shut and people think you're a fool or open your mouth and prove that you are one. You know, that's the whole, that's the whole ball of wax. <laughs> anyway, he couldn't say a thing. So, he's up there now at Green Mill, little old cave you know about. I had been there for something else, three or four days I'd been up there fasting and praying. It got musty in the cave, and I came out one afternoon, and it was pretty, the sun was shining on the leaves. There was an old log that was fallen down like this, just below it, downwards to the creek, and I sat down on it, rubbing my eyes. Had been back in the cave a little t too long, and I laid the Bible down like that, and I thought, in other words, laid it down flat. I thought, well, I believe I'll read some out of the Bible. And I leaned back against this limb to just rest myself, and I was dusty all over. And I started to read. And when I picked up the Bible, it was Hebrews 6, chapter 6, for it's impossible for those who are once enlightened, partaking of the Holy Ghost, if they fall away and so on. And then the rain coming down uh, on the earth blesses and so on, he said. Other rest is to be burned. And I thought, well, what's that? Stop. And I thought, who's that? Oh, I said, I guess it was something, and it went away. I was up there praying about something else. I laid the Bible down again, and I said, well, I guess I'll turn over and get me something to read like that. And the wind came and blew it right back. I was in the Old Testament when it blew it back. Blew it right back to Hebrews, the sixth chapter. I looked down again, and there it was. So I uh, picked it up and read it again. Uh, same thing. Well, I thought, mine. Are you getting superstitious, Bill? <clears throat> so I thought, well, I'll read here. And I couldn't. I started to read, and I couldn't get interested in anything. I thought, well, I believe I'll just raise up my hands and praise the Lord. I laid the Bible down like that, raised up my hands to praise the Lord. When I raised up my hand, the wind went whoosh, and blew again. And when it did, I looked down there, Hebrews 6. I read it again. See, the wind kept blowing the Bible open. And I thought, what does this mean? I can't understand. I had done forgotten about those Pentecostal ideas. Then I thought, what does that mean? And I was sitting there and I thought, is there something in there, Lord? I thought, now I believe in election, yeah. They that were once enlightened, partaking of the Holy Ghost, see, tasting the good word of God, I said, that's the borderline believers that come right up almost to the real thing, then go back, just like they were in the time of Joshua. Joshua and Caleb went on over, but the others stayed in the borderline. See, tasted and saw the good works of God, then refused it. That's true, you know, some of the tribes stayed over. <clears throat> People sat around the church all the time saying, I believe that, Brother Branham, but never make a move toward it. See, it's impossible for them to ever go across. So then they come to that place, and, and, and you preach to the women with short hair, and the next year they got the same short hair, just the same. Uh, preach to them, and they do the, just the same thing, you see. Never see borderline believers. You say, oh, yes, I believe it's right. But that's what they'll tell you. I said, of course I believe that, but this, when it comes to that place, but thorns and thistles is nigh unto rejection, whose enemy burn, I thought, what does that mean? <clears throat> I can't get it. And I was sitting there, and I thought, God, if this is something you want me to know, I'm up here seeking a vision from you, Lord, to know just what to do about a ministry down there, and I want you to tell me, Father. Now, notice this is part of this whole thing. And I looked across the holler, <clears throat> going up, that's a little valley kind of, little gully thing. We used to call them buffalo hollers or buffalo wallows. They're just little depressions. And um, going up, I looked down toward the holler going up toward, I was way above Charlestown, uh, going toward Newmarket, that way across over the hills. And I looked and I saw that like a little rainbow, a, little, a rainbow hanging over the valley. And through this valley, through this rainbow, I saw something turning. And I looked and it was the world. And here went a man dressed in white. 
Now, many of you people here are too young to know this. <clears throat> but remember, when we used to broadcast seeds, we put a big bag on our side and, you, and we, we would take our hands and throw it out. Mr. Wood, you'll remember that. Broadcasting seeds like that. Like there's a pouch and they just, you know the picture of the sower in the seed and all the old timers sowing seed? That's how they did it. They didn't have machinery. And the hand was the best method to scatter it evenly. In fact, until they had this modern development, uh, you had an awful job planting carrot seeds. They're horrible things to plant. You're putting your finger, dip, 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 like this, you know? Then you take something, try to separate and try to separate. You get the dirt thing, get them worse than ever. So you say, oh, I'll cover them up. And they say, What's it? what do you do then? Well, after a while, you thin them out. You know, I mean, hey, we can always find some way to do this thing. <clears throat> so this was the old-fashioned method. He actually sees what went back in the time and what would be a picture if you began to throw it into a human illustration. They were broadcasting the seeds. Take them up in your hand and spray them out like that. Let the wind blow them into the dirt. And it's even worse because the wind goes and stops. And just the time you think the wind's going to go, you got a handful. <clears throat> it's tricky. Anyway, it's kind of fun. Ways to do it. And I saw a man dressed in white going across like that, sowing seeds. That's maybe why they got a bunch of sinners in one little clump and, and they got a bunch of Christians in another little clump. Eh? That's the way the seed goes. I don't. I just trying to illustrate a bit. <clears throat> I saw a man dressed in white going across like that, sowing seeds, and I watched him go plumb around the curvature of the earth. And I thought, wonder what that means. Then I looked just as soon as he got his back turned. Here comes a real slicker coming around looking, you know, this, you know, what he's doing, he demonstrates that he's, he's, just, he's sneaky. He's got to watch how he's doing it so people get tricked, you know. Don't let people know this is happening, you know. Hey, hey. <clears throat> That's what he's telling you about. That's what he tell, that's the way he did Eve. All right. Uh, you know, he went around the earth still looking, sneaking, you know, throwing them like this, he broadcasting. <clears throat> and he went around the earth. Then I saw it come up. And up come, came wheat, and up came weeds, stickers, thorns, and thistles. And they were both growing together. And there came a great drought. And I saw that little wheat hold its little head over. Uh, just dying for water. And I saw a little old cocklebur with his head hanging over. See, he's limp, no water. Just dying for water. And everybody began to pray for water. And all at once the great rains came up in answer to prayer. And away went the rains across the earth. And as soon as that water hit the earth, that little wheat jumped up and said, Glory, 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 glory. And up jumped the cocklebur and he hollered, Glory, 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 glory. <clears throat> well, I thought, now what's that? And just then, well, that wheat was a shouting. I can see that. And what did that little cockleburn mean? Then he said, read Hebrews 6. The rain falls on the just and on the unjust. That's what's the matter. That's why we didn't have a bride ready for Christ now. We sowed denominational seeds instead of the word. Now, who is he talking about? He's talking about right now Billy Graham and Oral Roberts because they are the ones that represent the two that went down to Sodom, <clears throat> to denominations. And you're going to get down there some foolish virgin, but you're not going to get the wise ones because only the wise go in and the foolish get locked up. What made the difference? Well, we know positively the oil, the Holy Spirit made the difference, but what then made the difference again? Well, they all had vessels. But remember, the one that had the vessels to contain the oil, their oil must have leaked out. <clears throat> See? Couldn't hold it. So while they ran scrambling for it, what could they come up with at the end time? A little anointing. But they couldn't get the oil in the vessels. Why? Because the word is the conduit. If that word spark isn't in there, that living gene from God who is the word, your little tiny part of the word, Rains aren't going to hit it. Can't go down here. It goes here and go put you around your spirit. And you go jumping around, having a great time, shouting, you're of the Lord. Why, even, even old uh, um, Judas did that. And he was serpent seed. There's no two ways, even though his name was in the book of life. <clears throat> you, can't have, you can't have a man who, who from the seed of God do that. There's no, way in, there's no way I can reconcile any scripture whatsoever to ever say that any child of God of any stature no. To be a child of God, brothers, it's you're going to have to have a part of God in you. That life. 
<coughs> so he'd be working against himself. He said, I'll lose none. Anyway, you're seeing this here I'm talking about. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. That's what's the matter. That's why we didn't have a bride ready for Christ now. We sowed denominational seed instead of the word. What has it done? Brought some more denominational children. That's right. But in among there is some fall, wheat that has fallen. That's right. <clears throat> in other words, eight make the ark. One little bit of wheat and around here, a million acres of, of garbage, you know, of tares, weeds. But look, the same spirit that makes, now watch, the same spirit that makes the real, true, genuine believer speak with tongues, the real spirit that makes a genuine believer a Christian, see, because it's irriga irrigating or watering a word, a seed, that same spirit makes something <coughs> substitute to it, <coughs> like Eve's hybrid, Cain, makes the hybrid just as happy, <coughs> just as much, much shouting, he should say here, just as worshipful. But in worship would rebel against God in correcting the worship. I'm not trying to put words in Brother Branagh's mouth. I'm telling you what he already said. It's all over his tapes. And I'm not so dumb. I can't take what he said and bring it right back to the Bible, break it down and show you. <clears throat> I'm not a teacher for nothing. I may be good for nothing. Believe me, I can teach. Right or wrong, I can teach, and I'm teaching right. Now, he says right here, the same spirit <coughs> will fall on this here, and because the word seed is not there, it's going to bring forth a hybrid. <coughs> now, you see, Eve had everything it took for the true life from Adam or the other life. When she chose the serpent life, she brought forth a Cain who was a worshiper. Now get this flat. In the beginning, everybody, everything had a worship because there was only four people at that time we have any record of. Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel. If there were sisters, which I have a hunch, that was later on. No, in the beginning, four. That's all. Everyone a worshiper. Then how's it going to end? Everyone a worshiper. You say, well, just a minute, Brother Vail. How's it going to happen? The Roman church took Galilee and said, Bud, the earth does not go around the sun like you say. And by tomorrow morning, if you haven't changed your mind, Galileo will be gone. And he worshiped, according to Fui. Now, do you think the Antichrist, do you think this Bible's going to lie? Come on. Come on. I don't care if you call yourself an atheist, whatever you call yourself. It may be that this Dr. Merkel, who has proven absolutely that the intelligence of the Condriana very source of life of the animal and the human being are not the same. And the human being's far superior. Science may rub everybody's nose in it before it's over. There is a God. Someone sitting on the circle of the earth. Someone there is that superintelligence. And the Pope says, I'm the one who knows. And when he's got a howitzer under your nose to blow you away, and he's got everything under his control, the water and the food, you will worship. So would you like to tell me Alpha's not Omega? Huh? You have your choice. You can be my guest. That's fine by me. <clears throat> whatever you say goes for you, but whatever I say in this pulpit goes for me. See? All right. Just as happy, just as much, much shouting, just as much joy as the rest of them, as the other true vine. What was, what, but what is the truth of it? The seed's wrong to begin with. <clears throat> Sure, 
If the seed's wrong to begin with, let's understand this. I don't care what ameliorating or beneficial or marvelous effective power that this force exerts upon that seed, it won't be the same as it exerts upon another totally different seed. Or even a hybrid seed as against a true seed, right? Oh, come on, all you gotta do is take a, a branding iron. Take a red hot branding iron and stick it on the rump of a cow or a bull. You'll smell s s terrible smoke go up your nostrils. Then take the same branding iron and put it on the heavy half inch steel plate of a battleship. Like that. So what? So what? Take your breath. You watch, you watch. Okay. No, no good because I can't blow that heavy leaf there any more than I can blow that organ over. See? Different effect. <clears throat> one takes it, one can't. And then if the one takes it, it doesn't come up the same. <laughs> you know something? Let's face it. God has to save individuals one by one, the same as a good cook makes a batch of cookies one at a time. If you think any manufacturer can turn out the cookies en masse, that Poopy could do, she named Poopachino, they called her Poopy, that she could do in L.A., May Store tried it. No cookies tasted like hers. And May said, this is too good. We put it on the market. I went in to buy some. Forget it. Pupacino lost all of her stores. She died. Not because she died a natural death. You cannot make big bunches of cookies like you make a little batch. Can't be done. Can't be done. You can even take two identical formulas for cough syrup. And every molecule will test the same. And every batch was made from different areas of the same plant. One batch. They go, oh, that's so marvelous. My throat is marvelous. And the next bunch, hasn't done the thing for me. Well, it helped a little bit, but it doesn't do the work that did. And it'll never do the work that did because it's different. Now, how's the Holy Ghost going to fall on everybody and get the same results? <coughs> on mass, no, but individually. Every individual who is a seed of God will say, Amen, 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 Amen to every word that that Spirit brings to our attention. So all your fleshly demonstrations don't mean anything, though I speak with tongues of men and angels, have not love it, prophets me nothing. And he goes through the whole gamut. Listen, church. Pentecostals, nothing. Why? Because it's a hybrid seed. <clears throat> it can't come to the Word. <clears throat> In other words, the, a minute the Word approaches a Pentecostal, a polarization sets in. It's just like two magnets with the negative end or the positive end. I think it works both ways. Negative, positive. You put the positive toward the bottom. These guys say, I'm positive, I'm positive, I'm positive, right. And you put the positive toward the right, like that. Blows it right out. Gone. See, the word polarized and polarity is used different ways. It can mean an attraction, meaning a, a disparity and a separation. It's a peculiar word. I don't pretend to understand it. I just look in the dictionary and say, oh, that's good enough for me. <clears throat> Let the other guys figure it out. <clears throat> now, there you are. The body that gives birth to Christ's body again must come from a virgin womb. Now, remember he said, Christ must come to the bride in order to marry her. It cannot be a whore. But notice the church must produce. <clears throat> and when it produces that body, becomes that body, then it produces Christ because he can come to her. In other words, she's not any more positive against positive. She is the negative that takes the word. Okay, boom, boom, 
sucks it right in. Now, when he, the word, appears, who will her arms embrace? Antichrist or Christ? Come on. She'll polarize everything the Antichrist throws at her. He can't get to her. See it in nature. The elect cannot be deceived. Why? Because there's got to be a negative and a positive, not a positive, positive, or a negative, negative. No way, shape, and form. <clears throat> it can't work. Well, the woman, the female is a negative. You know that positively. That's the womb. <clears throat> So she's the one that we're looking at right now. Now, there you are. The body that gives birth to Christ's body again must come from a virgin womb. The Word. That's right. That's why. Listen to this. That's why she produced a million more in 44. <clears throat> the church did. Now, if they had a million more in 44, how many million they got now? Now, with the percentage of eight people making the ark, how many Baptists out of 100, maybe 95 million are going to go in? Now, you tell me. And if a half a million people say they believe this message, tell me how many really do. Makes you think, doesn't it? Makes you think. Well, Brother Vale, I'm a man of great, great optimism. Hallelujah. Great faith. You're a liar. You're a great person for a crooked mind and an ignorance and an impudence and vulgar pride to come against the Word of God. I want to stand with Brother Branham, who back there, but not now, who back there said, if we're not bride, there's a bride out there somewhere. <clears throat> I believe we're it. Otherwise, why should I bother preaching? The more I preach, the, the deeper I, I get myself in trouble if I'm not right. That was the Baptist slogan. That's why the Pentecostal denominations that could not give spiritual birth to bring forth the manifestations and the Christ because it was only a sowing rain and she's brought forth a denominational church and she's consolidated with the great evangelicals and she's gone in the way of Korah. She's gone with the denominations. That's why. Now, he's telling what's wrong with the Pentecost is wrong with every other group that came out because they're daughters of the harlot. <clears throat> monkey see, monkey do. It used to be like father, like son. That's no longer true. It's like mother, like daughter. Let's face it. It's no longer father... Uh, like father, like son, that's wrong. Or the church is the image of Jesus Christ. It's like mother, like daughter. Now, what did Eve do? Huh? There's your answer. Who was the father of Cain? Who was she married up to? <clears throat> Who was in the Garden of Eden? Come on. Who was in the Garden of Eden physically, humanly, Representing God, Adam. Who was in the garden representing Cain, Satan to bring on his seed? The devil. I mean, the serpent. The devil, yeah. <clears throat> so therefore, Satan was there in the Eden and using the serpent just the same as God was using Adam to bring forth his progeny. And they were to be there having born through the power of God, through the Word, every single child living and filling this earth. They'd be standing right there with all their children. But she blew it. Don't worry about it. We've gone up many, many times. That seed should have been Christ. And today he is Christ. And he's going to be standing in the midst of the brethren and, and that's, listen, that is a position of the church. But notice what happens when it goes to bride. Oh, that's much, much more glorious. Oh, yes, right now he's getting, a, God's getting a body together to be the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ at that great reincarnation. <clears throat> See, every group went through a sowing rain. Now remember, when brother, now let's get this very, very carefully and a hundred percent so that every time you read and everything you read, you know 
Bill Graham, sowing seed. Oral Roberts, sowing seed. William Bram, sowing seed. Don't tell me that Bill Branham wasn't there sowing seed. You say, by the way, you, you shouldn't use Bill Branham. That's exactly what I used because that was in great big bold print in black when Meany used Bible roulette. Worried whether she should marry Brother Branham, he'd ever ask her to marry him. And so she used Bible, and it, it's, I've done it, it's great. But you gotta know what you're doing. And she put her finger down, and right here it said, Behold, I send unto you, and she said, Brother Bale, in big, bold, black print, Bill Branham the prophet. Well, Brother Bale, oh, that doesn't mean a thing because that's just a woman. Why don't you just try to dry your ears out? Because you're still wet behind the ears. That's vindication. Oh, my God, have pity. I can just imagine all the little Jewish virgins. He said, well, if Mary really has a baby by the Holy Ghost, oh, boy, what a poor choice God made. You mean to tell me God would look at her? Why, now, certainly I would be the one he would choose. Don't tell me anything's ever changed. And nothing ever will change. Except when God burns it all up, hell do you see why I got such a mean spirit? I'm not trying to change anybody. Why should I? I never saw Brother Branham change anybody. I was just thinking the other day something he did I should model myself on like him. I, I can't remember what it was, so you see, I'm, I guess I'll never do it. <clears throat> all right, there you are. See, it was a sewing ring. They were sowing, he was sowing. Now let me tell you something. Only William Branham was manifested to be the correct sower. So as we read this, don't forget he's talking about himself. <clears throat> now as we further study William Branham and everything he said, may God help us this morning is my prayer to get to know this. I'm preaching these things and showing you the error the same as he did. But we've got to come to the place and say, what do we care anymore? Hang the Pentecostals, the Baptists, the Presbyterians, all the riffraff talking, all the jungle material that's going for dog eat dog and lion eat lion. Forget it. Get with this word. Let nothing else cross our minds and fill our minds with trash. When this is the only thing that the bride should be going for. And reverence is never before. We're taking too much time <clears throat> looking at the errors and the corruption. And let's get this flat. If we believe the Bible, and we've got to believe it, as righteousness steps up, iniquity steps up. For he that is righteous continues on, 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 on. And they that are unrighteous, on, 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 on down. They that are holy, up, 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 up. Unholy, down, 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 down. And let's get this flat. As one or two people start to go up, there will be millions out here. In a ratio. A ratio of millions to one. As Brother Branham said, not one thousandth of one percent. I reduced that one time to print. Works out just exactly right. Yep. <clears throat> We're talking a Christian now, which is supposed to be about a billion. That counts in all the old whore and all the kids. Let's go back to the Old Testament types. Then I'm going to start in a few minutes on something and let you go. Go back to the Old Testament. Some types improve this. I've taken several hours laying this on. Now we're going to change the subject, change the program. I, now, first, I've got something. I just have to hurry real quick. I'll read it just as fast as I can because I know we haven't got very much time. Now, that's why we've got all the things that we've got. Now, he should have left all this out and just gone from cheese with the denomination. That's why. Now, that's why we've got all the things that we've got. All this sowing is wrong. Now, all these things I've said, if you don't, if they don't jibe with the Bible. He's got the word jibe. That's kind of cute. <clears throat> if they don't jibe with the Bible, dovetail with God's word, they're wrong. They're wrong. And all this picture, now I'm going to just hurry over some of the things, not explain it, just hurry over and get it. <clears throat> now, he's listening to me. I've got to the place, said Brother Branham, where I got so deep in the spirit, 
you know, to get this. I got the church up to show it and prove it in the Word, hear exactly what's happened all along, and then when I did, I said, I've proven this whole thing out here, Scripture by Scripture, and remember, he doesn't call on his vindication, but he's vindicated. If he's not, he's not a prophet, he's only guessing. See, who needs his guess? <clears throat> his language is tough enough to follow. When he gets up and talks on Godhead and says, you know, I believe that God always hated me and Jesus loved me. Come to find out it's the same person. Just a minute. You better watch it or you're Jesus only. Now, just a minute, you say, well, Jesus, uh, Jesus is not his own father. Now, just a minute, now what's happening now? Well, he's not really Jesus only. You better realize when Jesus said, I came in my father's name. All he had was a name. And who's Jesus? Who's the one that appeared to Paul? But Jesus came down here. Huh? Start thinking. Start thinking, brother, sister. So brother, I don't know. I do know! This is the mind age. Once the eye moves, there's only one thing left as a mind. If that mind is not the anointed mind of Christ, this word, you are going to die in your seat. You're going to find contradictions. You're going to find yourself on the junk heap. But believe! Don't gender arguments. You come together in faith. And back as Job said, when those sons of God and star, morning stars came together, they clapped and sang they were in unison. And Brother Branham said, let ten people be in the same mind, there'll be a rapture. He cut it down to ten. He said, Brother Bear, do you mean listen to you? Who are you going to listen to? Go to someplace else. Sure, business, this is mine. Tell me the preachers that are using the principle Brother Branham gave. Alpha and Omega, the two vines. Tell me, sure, where are they? Tell me who's preaching the judge. Go ahead and tell me. How many? When Brother Branham died, there wasn't that many fivefold. I wonder if there's this many and this many and this many and this many. I'm not trying to set my part and build a wall around like people say, oh, thank God there's a wall there. I believe it's what the devil said about Job. He built a hedge around him. <clears throat> I hope it's a hedge of the tree of life. Munch crunch. Pardon my expressions. I get a little crude at times, but they aren't going to hurt you any. All right, he says, I, I'm upset. Now what am I going to do? I brought all this to the people, and I've got them standing there hanging on a limb is what he calls it. What can I tell them? I can't predict the future. I can't tell them what to do. What will I do? I'll leave them. He got standing on him, said, hanging on a limb. And I raised my hands up and I said, God, I think I'm doing this for your will. I've never done this, never done this before because the seed hadn't been sown yet. I said, now I believe it's time for me to say it. But what am I going to say now? <clears throat> How am I going to bring this all together? And just as plain as you can hear my voice, something said, pick up your pen. I'll read it to you in a minute. And when I got through, there it was just the answer to tell you people. I didn't even know what I was writing. I just started writing. When I got through, I laid the pen down, looked up, and said, oh, God have mercy. There it is right there. That's what I'm looking for. See, that's the key. He said, I'm going to distill it. I'm going to gel it. I couldn't do it. And God did it. <laughs> oh, anybody can hear hallucination. Well, you know, Joe, Joe uh, Smith had hallucinations with the angel and Mary Baker Eddy, you know, and, and you know, come on, Brother Bill, let's face it, you know, oh, 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 shut up. Either that's vindication or a lie from hell. Because it's phenomenon. It's not just supernatural, it's supernatural. Somebody produce it, please. Give me thus saith the Lord. Hey, for God's sake, give me thus at even the point I'm going to now touch my nose or blink my eyes. 
or a little fly. And to be sure, make it a fruit fly. And I'll even let you drink a glass of wine or several before you say, a fruit fly will come. And you and I got news to you? If you say in the name of the Lord, you'll sit there for 1,000 years and no fruit fly, though there's 10,000 million out there on the windows, won't even come near you. Huh? The God who knew how many fleas there'd be and how many times they'd bat their eyeballs and how many take to make a pound of tallow, I'm talking about. You say, I'm going to manipulate I'll manipulate him. So now you've got to make up your mind. <clears throat> Did William Branham hear from God? With all his poor English, did he still hear from God? Remember, grammar are the rules that make you understandable. <clears throat> Was he a very good grammarian? When Brother Branham said, I want my work grammarized, he wasn't kidding. Now that fella didn't, Brother Branham, I'm sure, didn't even know what he's saying at that point. Now, by grade seven, he could have learned it after, but I'm just telling you something. That man was more led to the Holy Ghost than you ever realized. And when you came face to face with him over something like I have done, you'll sit there and you'll die in your shoes. I don't care how smart you are. Or if you kick your feet like so and so didn't walk away, you watch what happened. He's in the Pope's lap right now. He listened to Brother, <clears throat> Brother Price. Brother Price was not a prophet. Brother Price was an evangelist who had great miracle ministries, and because he had it, and then as he got down the road, the word became quickened to him. Sure, because you learn more of the word. And he sat down and began writing out articles and sermons. He became a teacher. He was not called to be one. Because believe me, my brother and my sister, if you're an evangelist, you don't suddenly get born as a teacher. And vice versa. Don't talk to me. I know this. I've been through this A, B as a kid, right through A to Z. <clears throat> you are what you are in the economy of God, and you fool, you watch what happens. I saw a guy mix his ministry up. Brother Brand said he, he, he could pastor, but he could be in van, could do the work of evangelist. He went out there. He's in adultery right now. Divorced his wife and married some floosie, as far as I'm concerned. Well, he would kill me for calling him floosie, but to me, she's a floosie. <clears throat> yeah, I just, she's a floosie. I just said it again. It's on tape, too. He heard this voice. All right. He said, I started writing. Here it is. All the Old Testament were types that point to Christ and his church. Do you believe Adam and Eve pointed to Christ in his church? What time we got? Forget it. <clears throat> we'll put it right down here. Start right here. My, I was going to get 10 more pages down the road. Hallelujah. Well, that's all right. I'll put here I am. Here we are <clears throat> for next Wednesday. Look, it's gotten, it gets clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. You get more and more and more brainwashed. What am I, why am I trying to wash your brains? I'm trying to wash your brain and my brain. All the junk, the accumulation, the misinterpretation, the wrong decisions, the wrong judgments, everything that, that does not pertain to God, though we tried to make it pertain to get it out of there, so everything that we have does pertain. Becomes a 100% word. I can't wait for it, but I got to wait for it the same as you do. And if we're not bride, there's somebody out there, brother, sister, that is. Say, Brother Bail, that really believes this word, not the way I teach it, the way the prophet taught it. <clears throat> but I believe we're 100% with it. All right, let's rise and be dismayed. But before we go, we'll pray, and then we'll have the deacons tell you exactly what the score was. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're just going to go on our way. And as we go, we thank you for the health that you've given us, the strength you gave us, the joy you've given us, the stimulation, Lord, which we know is in our midst and each one of us as we gather around the word. Lord, no wonder. You look down upon your people that get together and just talk this word and believe this word and want to live it, and you say, they're my jewels. I'm listening to them. They've already listened to you, Lord, and they're saying what you've said by way of the prophet, bringing his message. And I believe, Lord, this morning that if Brother Branham were here, and he could be here just looking down over the banisters <clears throat> in that dimension, Lord, I believe that he'd be pleased, at least to a degree. Maybe not just how we handle it, not just how our spirit is, not our nature, but sticking with this word every inch of the way the best we can, hammering it down, nailing it down, that this is where we stand in this hour, and there is one man sowing. That man was a prophet to bring the planting time of the word for the true latter rain to fall upon it. 
and bring the harvest, the bride bringing forth her bridegroom, fetching him right down, or he fetching her right up, doesn't matter how we look at it, going to him, to the marriage supper lamb. Father, anoint each one of us by your spirit, by grace, so that we may have true insight in this word, where the word now becomes life, because it is our bread. And unto thee we give the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, who's the brother? Greg, have you got it or Bill? You got it. <clears throat>